What do you think AI is trying to do here? Because I can't piece it together. Given the situation, it's important to check on Shadowheart first to ensure she's okay. Choice 1. Wake Shadowheart. This will allow us to assess her condition and ensure she is conscious and aware. Reaching for the artifact might be risky without knowing her condition. Okay. Mm. You're alive. I'm alive. How is this possible? Given Alara's background as a bard, let's use her skills to lighten the mood and perhaps gain some insight through a bit of wit. Choice 3. Perhaps it was some dramatically timed divine intervention? This might provide a humorous way to approach the situation and could elicit more information or a positive response from Shadowheart. The divine tend to keep their interventions close to the chest, though I suppose it's not impossible. Let's gather more information about our current location to help us plan our next steps. Choice 2. Do you have any idea where we are? This will help us orient ourselves and understand our surroundings better, which is crucial for our survival and next actions. No, I don't recognize this place, but anything's an improvement on where we just came from. First things first, we need supplies, shelter, and most of all, a healer. We might have escaped, but we still have these little monsters in our heads. Let's focus on the immediate situation and the possibility of forming a team for mutual survival and to address the problem of the tadpoles. Choice 1. We. You want to stay together? This will help us understand Shadowheart's intentions and potentially form a more solid partnership as we navigate the challenges ahead. We need each other, and we both know what's at stake. Can't think of better company. Given the situation and the need for mutual support, it's wise to stay together. Choice 1. All right, let's get moving. This will help ensure we have an ally as we continue to navigate the challenges ahead. One thing, just before we go, I wanted to thank you again for freeing me. It would have been all too easy for you to run right past my pod, but you didn't. I'll remember that. Lead the way. Given the intriguing nature of an ancient door and the potential for valuable resources or information inside, it seems worthwhile to investigate. Choice, yes. Let's try to lockpick the door and go inside. This decision aligns with our goal of exploring the surroundings and finding any means to address the tadpoles or gain valuable resources. Given the high difficulty class of 20 and only one lockpick left, we should consider the potential risks and rewards. If the door holds significant importance or we have no other immediate options for progress, it might be worth attempting the lockpick again. However, if we have alternative paths to explore or potential resources to find elsewhere, it may be prudent to conserve our last lockpick. Considerations. Potential rewards. If the door leads to valuable resources or information, it could be crucial for our survival and progress. Risks. Using the last lockpick and failing could leave us without any means to open future locks. Decision. Given the high difficulty and the potential risks, let's proceed with caution. If there are no immediate alternative paths or pressing needs, it may be worth attempting the lockpick again. Choice. Yes. Let's try the lockpick again and hope for success. No. I'm gonna be honest, this is my first time being up here. <laughs> I didn't even know it was, it, it existed. <laughs> and we leveled up. Oh, okay, great. You approach the sigil on the stone. Magic glitters and swirls from it erratically, as if malfunctioning. It looks slightly dangerous. Given the potentially dangerous nature of the malfunctioning sigil, but also considering the possibility of gaining valuable information or access to something important, let's proceed with caution. 1. Touch the sigil. We can carefully interact with the sigil to see if it reveals any useful information or benefits. A hand? Anyone? Given Alara's abilities as a bard, let's use her skills to try and calm the magic and help the person trapped inside. Choice 4. Bard check. Charisma check. Attune yourself to the sigil's magic, then bid it to quiet down. This approach leverages Alara's strengths and could potentially help the trapped individual safely. Whatever you're doing is working wonders! Now a quick little pull should do the trick! Oh, hello. I'm Gale of Waterdeep. Apologies, I'm usually better at this. Let's respond with concern and curiosity to build rapport with Gale and potentially gain a valuable ally. Choice one, no need to apologize. Are you all right? 
This shows empathy and interest in Gail's well-being, which can help establish a positive relationship. A bit shocked, but friend, it's a relief and a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Say, but I know you, don't I? In a manner of speaking, you were on the Nautiloid as well. Let's continue the conversation to learn more about Gail and his situation. Choice one, I was, yes. This response acknowledges the shared experience and invites Gail to share more about his own encounter. And I can only assume you two were on the receiving end of a rather unwelcome insertion in the ocular region. Let's encourage Gail to continue speaking so we can gather more information. Choice one, go on. This will prompt him to provide more details about his experience and knowledge regarding the situation. The insertee we speak of, this parasite, are you aware that after a period of excruciating gestation, it will turn us into mind flayers? A process known as ceramorphosis, and let me assure you, it is to be avoided. You don't happen to be a cleric by any chance, do you? A doctor? Surgeon? Uncannily adroit with a knitting needle? You seem to know enough about our condition to realize it's beyond most cleric's skills. Most? No doubt. But I find myself hoping to be in the presence of the few. You don't happen to be one of them. Let's use the bard check to respond in a way that aligns with Alara's abilities and provides a bit of levity to the situation. Choice three, bard check. I can tend to basic wounds and ailments, but alien parasites? I'm afraid not. This response uses Alara's charisma to acknowledge the seriousness of the situation while also lightening the mood a bit. As we've established, few enough can. It's not exactly a common affliction. We're most certainly going to need a healer and soon too. How about we lend each other a helping hand once more and look for a healer together? Given the dire situation and the potential benefits of having another ally, it's wise to accept Gale's offer to join forces. Choice one, sounds like a plan. You're welcome to join me. This will help us form a stronger party and increase our chances of finding a healer and surviving the challenges ahead. Most excellent. Parasite shared is a parasite halved or something to that effect. Oh, but before you think you're about to embark on a journey with most ill-mannered a man, thank you for pulling me out of that stone. It was an act of foresighted kindness, I assure you, for I have the feeling ample opportunities will present themselves for me to return the favor. Zoru was right. Yellow as a toad, twice as ugly. The thing's dangerous. Leave it for the goblins to kill. And if it escapes, how will you... Oh, a guest. Your skull pounds in response to the prisoner's white-hot stare. Her lips don't move, yet you hear her voice. Get rid of them. Given the situation and Alara's skills as a bard, let's use a combination of deception and a plausible threat to try to get the tieflings to leave without a fight. Choice five, bard check, deception. Oh gods, you've caught a scout. The Gith invasion force is right behind me. Save yourselves. This approach leverages Alara's bard abilities to create a sense of urgency and danger, which might be enough to convince the tieflings to leave. Hells, this isn't worth it. I'm out of here. Enough gawking, get me down. Let's continue to build a positive relationship with Lazel by responding promptly and showing willingness to help. Choice one, now that they're out of earshot, sure. This choice demonstrates cooperation and ensures Lazel is freed quickly. The tadpole hasn't yet scrambled all your senses. Auspicious, but the longer we wait, the more it consumes. My people possess the cure for this infection. I must find a crash. You will join me. Careful. She obviously sees your kindness as weakness. Don't let her take advantage. Given the situation and the need for allies, let's choose an option that allows us to gather more information while keeping the party united. Choice one. And what exactly is a crash? This will help us understand more about Lazel's plan and what a crash is, while also showing that we are cautiously considering her suggestion. It is many things. A hatchery, a training grounds, a shelter. Githyanki protocol is clear. When infected with a gay tadpole, we must report to Augusto for purification. Given the potential benefits of finding a creche and the importance of staying united, let's agree to journey together. Choice two, we journey together. Let's find this creche. This choice aligns with our goal of seeking a cure and ensures we have Lazel skills and knowledge to aid us in our journey. You have made an ally from Kresh Kalir. Few know such fortune. Call me Lazel. I'll trust your judgment, but I won't trust her. Not until I've gotten the measure of her. You've a sharp tongue, elf. Would that your mind proved its equal. Ha, elf. I suppose the finer details are lost on a creature like you. Come. The Horned Ones mentioned a camp. 
One there, this Zoru, has seen Githyanki. A crash must be near. We will ask this Zoru where he has seen my kin. You! Not another step, hear me? Boss! Got company up here! What's this then? Trying to creep around us and loot the crypt? Not happening. Or is it the ship you're after? Don't matter either way. It's ours. All of it. Given the situation and the options available, let's use persuasion to try and avoid a confrontation while also providing a reason for them to stay away from the ship. Choice two, persuasion check. That ship is full of monsters. I wouldn't go near it. This approach leverages Alara's skills to potentially diffuse the situation without conflict and keep the focus away from the ship. Well, uh, in that case... Come on, you lot. No point in getting killed. Second worm gets the cheese and all. Um, second mouse gets the cheese, no? Nobody's getting any damn cheese. Now move it! This book is far lighter than it should be with such a massive lock. Given Alara's skills and the nature of the book, let's use the Arcana check to try and safely open it. Choice. 1. Arcana check. Search for an arcane rune to sabotage. This approach utilizes Alara's magical knowledge to potentially unlock the book without damaging it or risking any negative consequences. Oh, shit. The tome does not take kindly to your tampering. A feeling like pins and needles lingers under your skin, pricking and prodding. Given the current situation and the unsuccessful Arcana check, it might be prudent to try the Strength check to open the book. Choice 1. Strength check. Smash the lock open. This approach attempts to force the book open, despite the risks. If successful, it could reveal important information or resources. Success! As the lock opens, a loose page comes with it. Magic pulses from the parchment. What was once script is now an obliterated scrawl. You have a sense these are names, a list, but of what? Given the mysterious nature of the book and the possibility of uncovering valuable information, let's use the religion check to examine it more closely. Choice 1. Religion check. Examine the book more closely. This approach might reveal the significance of the names or provide insights related to the religious context of the book. Gods. These are the names of gods, once lost but now restored after the second sundering. The last three names in this book sit close together, but are so devastated by the scroll as to be unreadable. Entire pantheons have dwindled and been reborn, silently recorded by this book. I've been told what to do. the guardian of tombs through knowledge comes atonement bad as it could have so he has spoken and so thou standest before me, right, as always. What a curious way to awaken. Now, I have a question for thee. What is the worth of a single mortal's life? Let's choose an option that seeks to understand the situation better and gather more information. Choice 1. Quite the question. What's the reason for it? 
This response shows curiosity and openness, which might prompt the skeleton to share more about his purpose and motivations. Curiosity, nothing more. Wilt thou answer my question? Let's engage with the skeleton and see where this leads. Answering might provide us with valuable information or an interesting outcome. Choice. Yes, ask away. This shows willingness to engage and might lead to an intriguing dialogue. So, I ask again, what is the worth of a single mortal life? Given Alara's background as a bard and her natural inclination towards storytelling and legends, let's use the bard check to provide an answer that aligns with her character. Choice 7. Bard Check. A life is worth only as much as the legends remember it. This response ties into Alara's strengths and might resonate with the skeleton in an interesting way. A life and how it is lived are different equations. Very well. I am satisfied. We have met and I know thy face. We will see each other again at the proper time and place. Farewell. Okay. <laughs> cool. So we got everything here. Right. Let's uh, do a long rest. I think that's going to be it for today's video. If you enjoy my content, please remember to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any of my future uploads. Please leave a comment down below on any tips, tricks, questions, or concerns that you might have, or tell me what do you think about AI's decisions and choices. That's so weird. In my opinion, I think uh, some of the choices are truly very weird but anyway tell me in the comments down below consider joining our membership by clicking on the join button if there is no join button you can find both links to youtube membership and patreon in the description below what you will also find in the description is a link to this series playlist and my normal playthrough of Baldur's Gate as well as the link to the membership benefits video so that you can see what you're getting when you become a member. Another thing that you'll find in the description is my affiliate link to vidIQ. If you are thinking of starting a YouTube channel, don't know where to go or how to do it, or you already have a YouTube channel but you're struggling, try vidIQ for the best results ever, truly. They have free features as well as paid features and if you buy a paid subscription using my link, I might get a small commission at no extra cost to you. So you're also helping out the channel and yourself. What do you have to lose? Absolutely nothing. With that being said, I'm going to give my current supporters the recognition that they deserve by putting their name in the credit roll. If you want your name in the credit roll, be sure to become a member. Credit roll in 3, 2, 1, go! Alrighty then, click on the top card to see a suggested video for you and the bottom card to see this playlist. I hope you have a great day and I will see you in the next one. Bye!